The following is a musical journey through the career of the game Triple H. Paul Levesque has accomplished just about everything throughout his career and along the way has been fortunate enough to be accompanied by some pretty brilliant entrance theme songs that have always suited his character to a T. Whether it was an elegant classical music masterpiece or a heavy metal masher, you could always recognize Trips' music because the intros to his songs gave fans an immediate sign that it was time to play the game. From Blue blood to bell tolls, let's take a look behind the themes. Look, we all gotta start somewhere, right? And that's where our story begins, with the young and green game getting a gig with WCW, where he would debut as the menacing monster known as Terra Rising. So a bit of a backstory about the name, okay? Andre Risen was a popular NFL wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons at the time. So Trips messed around with his previous gimmick of the Terrorizer, a name that was given to him by his legendary trainer, Killer Kowalski, paired it with Andre's last name, changed the spelling, and while La, Terra Rising was born. Signed to only a one-year contract, Terra wasn't rising anywhere. So he was repackaged and renamed Jean-Paul Levesque, an uppity French aristocrat. WCW being WCW continued to use this generic butt rock theme for him, which made absolutely no sense. But Paul was merely using his time in the promotion as a platform to get noticed by the WWE. And his plan worked, because when his contract was up, he said, excusez-moi, and exited center stage. As a continuation of his WCW gimmick, the future Triple H started off his WWF career as the Connecticut Blue Blood Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Snobbish, regal, and extremely arrogant, Helmsley would provide free of charge lessons in etiquette and class to the unwashed masses of wrestling fans in various taped vignettes prior to making his in-ring debut. Which, by the way, some fun fact trivia for you, was against none other than the slovenly sexual predator himself rock and roll Buck Zumhoff. This classical theme obviously worked so well in the mid-1990s when Hunter pranced his way down the aisle looking to rid the WWF of such disgusting riffraff like Henry O. Godwin, Duke the Dumpster Drossy, T.L. Hopper, and Mantar. With its relaxing harpsichord melody, this may sound like elevator muzak or something you'd hear while drinking your way around the world at Epcot Center, but it's a fine theme for a nobleman of Trips' stature, naturally. If CM Punk was the voice of the voiceless, then Hunter Hearst Helmsley was the snootiest of the snooty. The Connecticut Blue Blood is a far cry from just how much Trips' overall character has evolved throughout his career, but gifting him with this song showcased how highly the WWE thought about him. That is, at least until the infamous curtain call happened. Sauntering to the ring to the most triumphant piece of classical music perhaps ever written, the King of Kings strutted his stuff to the jubilant Ode to Joy from Ludwig von Beethoven and not Ludwig Borga. Written to celebrate the brotherhood and unity of mankind, this tune was meant to convey Triple H's superiority over everyone as he won his first Intercontinental Championship and was well on his way to winning the King of the Ring. But he had to go and break kayfabe, becoming nothing more than a blue blood jobber for a little while. Are you ready? Bow to the master. Perhaps no entrance music spoke more to the cynical use of the late 90s than that of D-Generation X, seemingly having flipped the bird or at the very least given one big giant crotch chop to the old timers and their traditions when they made their curtain call, DX became the WWF's resident rebels, all about thumbing their nose at the authorities and breaking all the rules. Becoming the de facto leader of the group after WrestleMania 14 with Shawn Michaels dropping the ball, Hunter leveled up DX and made the group hugely popular. Performed by the Chris Warren Band, this song will go down in history as one of the most recognizable entrance themes for any stable in wrestling. Are You Ready captures the feel of the Attitude Era with an amped up sense of chaos and arrogance to it. Oh yeah, and if you're not down with that, we got two words for ya. (laughs) 
Once upon a time, Triple H was not hated by the internet. Many fondly remember his penchant for making the timely and quick-witted penis joke as HBK's little buddy. However, all of that changed in 1999 when Hunter turned his back on his little buddy, X-Pac, at WrestleMania 15 and reunited with China joining the corporation. Trip stabbed his fellow degenerates in the back for the almighty dollar to become a quote-unquote corporate player. This also meant that he could no longer break it down as a fan favorite and had to resort to using this Jim Johnston creation that served as a one-month transitional theme to show his burgeoning sadistic side. This track is often forgotten when discussing wrestling entrance music because it's a little generic but still has some pretty dope guitar riffs. After Vince McMahon broke up the corporation, Triple H's focus shifted to the one championship that had eluded him his entire career, the WWF title. Simply put, it was now his time, and it was definitely game on. My Time was initially released on the WWF The Music Volume 4 as Our Time, and being credited to both Triple H and China, is basically the final product of a song that started out being called Cerebral Assassin and also Higher Brain Pattern. Chris Warren returns to deliver the vocals, and he's really concerned about finding out if anybody knows who's sleeping with who. With so many big names fighting atop the WWE, Trips had to make a statement to stake his claim as the number one guy, and my time was that declaration. This amplified anthem served him so well during his first dominant run in becoming one of the E's top heels. So manipulative, so angry, and so thirsty. Yo, Jimmy, definitely hit us with that Triple H shh. Seeing as how Joseph Run Simmons, Daryl, DMC McDaniels, and Jam Master J are one of the most influential acts in the history of hip hop culture, it should come as no surprise that the trio was also the first hip hop act to perform live at a WrestleMania like they did way back in 1989. However, a decade later, the legendary rap trio from Hollis Queens remixed one of the most iconic theme songs in all of pro wrestling for the rap rock compilation album WWF Aggression, kicking off the album with their adidas laced tight the kings is featured as the lead off track and sees run dmc walk their way back to their rick rubin produced days although primarily a dx theme not a triple h theme the track was mostly featured on tv being used by hunter's dx compatriots while the game was out rehabbing a knee injury Cementing himself as a main event heel to carry the WWE into the new millennium, Triple H began to officially refer to himself as The Game, written and produced by Jim Johnson in less than five minutes. Because the song only has three chords, the vibe worked wonders for Trips' metalhead character. Add in the fact that the WWE was able to get Motorhead to sing makes this one of the most iconic WWE entrance songs of all time. While My Time is still a kick-ass theme in its own right, having Lemmy Lemmy sing your entrance is like god mode, son. The single distorted opening E power chord gave fans an immediate sign that the cerebral assassin had arrived. Add to it the signature sound of Lemmy's stern, haunted, gravelly voice, and it was truly game over. Being the boss's son-in-law probably gets you a leg up in securing the best entrance theme songs, right? Oh well. Say it with me, fam. Evolution is a mystery. And gosh dang, does Motorhead make some incredible wrestling theme music. So back when Triple H was dominating the WWE in 2003, he formed an alliance with the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and two impressive newcomers in Dave Batista and Randy Orton. Evolution was born, and with it came this impressive theme song. As a modern-day Four Horsemen, Evolution was never a run-to-the-ring-together kind of faction. They were more about celebrating their past, present, and future, which Line in the Sand was great for. It may be a bit on the slow side, but a song touting the four biggest heels on the roster at the time didn't need to be speedy. As soon as that clock starts ticking, the excitement builds at the beginning, and this song kicked the ruthless aggression era into overdrive. On your knees, dog. 
Behold, the WWE's Chief Operating Officer's theme that finally rounds out the trifecta of Motorhead Mashers. Over the course of his 20 plus year WWE career, Triple H has captured every major championship, headlined multiple WrestleMania cards, won the Royal Rumble match multiple times, and spearheaded two of the most influential factions in sports entertainment history. And yet, despite all these accolades, the game might just be scratching the surface when it comes to his legacy. This theme took over as Hunter's primary music when he became the mouthpiece of the authority and when Trips would be cutting 20 minute promos to open Monday Night Raw as opposed to wrestling. This song was originally released in 2006 on the WWE's Reckless Intent compilation album featuring rock, metal, rap, and hip hop artists doing versions of entrance themes as well as providing additional original tracks. King of Kings is a perfect blend that's best for business in complementing the game's post in-ring career demeanor and his powerful COO office personality. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about all of the game's theatrical high-budget WrestleMania entrances. The grandest stage of them all is for some superstars, not necessarily about the match they put on, but more about the feeling of hearing your theme music play you to the ring in front of thousands in attendance and the millions watching worldwide. And these words definitely ring true for Triple H. Over the years, he has taken great pride in crafting memorable entrances befitting of the show of shows, from channeling his inner Arnold Schwarzenegger to the Skull King, Triple H is the wrestler most synonymous with having elaborate entrances that get everyone hyped up before his matches. At WrestleMania 27, Trips would try to end The Undertaker's undefeated WrestleMania streak, so he wanted to show that he was ready for war. This point was hammered home as Centurion Guards and Metallicas for whom the bell tolls rang throughout the Georgia Dome. As the music built to a climax, Triple H emerged, bathed in a spotlight and clad with a spiked cloak and skull crown signaling that the King of Kings was ready for an all-out war. And that's it for our documentary. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode and we look forward to taking you further behind the themes in future documentaries. If you have any suggestions or recommendations for us, please leave a comment down below and don't forget to give this video a massive thumbs up. Go ahead and also share it with your friends who you think might also enjoy it because it really helps our channel grow and reach new people. Also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing for weekly wrestling theme song content and don't forget to follow us on social media so you get all our latest updates and we will see you next time wrestling behind the themes. 